Hi and welcome to SAC part three to dive deeper into the basic scripting with objects. So today we're going to be scripting with an existing report in order to hide it and some other functions that we'll share. Also, you utilize a radio button and then also utilize it in a script to define the action. And then understand why clients do design do desire this versus just having all the things on separate pages and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started. So on this page, <clears throat> I already put a text box in terms of how I want this as my learning pit. So we're gonna add a table. So if we click on the table, we'll go ahead and find the model that I created in the first session. Great. Now, what I'm going to do is because I want to make this example full-fledged where I'm going to pull all my data in. A team, actually I'm going to leave that where I have my team first, right? Because that's important to me. And then also, I like to divvy out my data set. So sometimes I'll go and put my C and E first, right? I kind of understand my balances. So with that in hand, I'm going to say, okay, this is really where I want to be. And I'm going to put date in my column, right? To give expansion of where we are. Now, if you don't like the date as an, a full feature or expand down to the quarter length, you have the option to change your hierarchy to be your quarter month. You could be flat, which is just the periods. You could have your half year. It's all very variants on what you like and how you like to look at things. So for now, I am going to do year month. Your other option is have a hierarchy, but if the user likes to see it as just the leaves, they can. So as you notice, right now, it's giving you just the leaves, right? So if you notice, this takes up a lot of landscape that your key master data is not being visible. So to get that organized correctly how you want it, you'll want to right click, right click and go to table functions, freeze panes. And I like to freeze up to the column, right? So now if you scroll across, in your story, you can get all the way across to where data resides up until December, which is ideal. So that is great. That is our first step. Now our second step is we said that, okay, I'm going to put a graph in here. And I'm going to put a graph that's going to fill this whole area. So let me go ahead and do that. So right now it's sitting over here. We'll move that in a moment. And for this data, I want to say, I really want a line chart here. Um, so let's put in the income. And then, actually, let's have the next graph of this. We can do, Keep this a pie. So an income amount. And then I'm gonna do this by team. Right? So brown sealers, and I guess by just the whole schema, Browns are definitely my favorite team, so therefore I've included that. So now if we look at here and we want to match up exactly where we are, the easiest way, instead of guessing and trying to go over it, I like to come in here and say, okay, what are your properties? You're 272206, right? So then I come here and I say, okay, fine. Now, here in your styling, you're 272206. Zero 
zero six. All right, so now it's exactly the same lengths. So which is perfect, right? So now you're like, oh, it's overlapping. How does this benefit me? Okay, so that's dealing to our next step. Understanding what this means over here. Your assets is just what you can drag in and pull into what you want to build. Then you have an outline. Outline is exactly what you're building, right? So chart one is here. The three jobs, I'm just gonna click on it to show you. If you want to edit the ID, or if you want to double click and change the name, which is good, having a table, um, having a, a declared name is very beneficial. But for this example, I'm gonna leave this chart one. So let's say I want to hide this. So when the user comes in, I just want them to see the initial table. So, okay, now, how does scripting benefit me to get to the chart and hide this? So then I'm like, okay, so where would I want them to see it? Up in the corner? So then I can go and insert a button let that appear, it appeared over here. I can pull it over here, right? I'm not gonna worry about sizing just yet, right? So this is gonna say button, my text is gonna be show and graph. Then I'm gonna have one more. Sizing of this with that, there we go. Um, Uh, show graph button, and then I'm gonna have one more, right? Because I'm gonna say show graph, and then I'm also gonna have a button in that same respect to say show table. Great, so now we have that setting. So let's go ahead and save this. So we're gonna save it, we're gonna call this um, basic scripting score. Perfect. So now we have that saved. So now the question is, all right, well, if I click on it now, nothing, if I go into view mode, right, to test, and I click on it, right, nothing's gonna happen because there's no code embedded as yet. So let's wait and just prove that out to you. Right, click that, nothing happens. Click that, nothing happens. Your best friend in terms of scripting, if you hit Control Shift I, and then go to console. Anytime you do an action, so let's say I click, well, wait a minute for it to catch up. If I click on show graph, right? It didn't do anything because nothing is in that code length. So if I come over here and I say, okay, I like to say, I need this side of the screen. I go to my outline. I see my show graph button, I click on it. And I'm like, okay, let me go to the function button. And always on, I go, I always utilize on click because long pressed, it hasn't meant, uh, meant too much to me so far. Um, so there we have here. So now we're like, okay, so we want, with this click, we want chart one. So control space is your friend. So we want chart one dot, and now what do we want? We want it to be set, visible, right? And then we want it to, we want it to be true. When you come out of it, you always have to close with a semicolon. Now, if that's visible, your table has to go away. So then if we say, start writing it, table, we select the correct one. Control space is always nice because your syntax is always in a better place. And it will make this false, 
right? And in the same respect, you can reuse this code. So now we have, this is button one, we'll go to button two. And click, and we will flip the script, we'll paste it. Now this will become false in the basics. And this will become true, right? For a lot of your movement and everything else that you might work on that a client might want, you want to have that movement, right? Where you hide things that are not necessary for that particular action so they can move forward. So let's go ahead and save this. When you come over here, you have to refresh the URL or else your changes, coding changes will not apply. So let's wait for that to come through. Excellent. So now I want to my show my graph. Boom, here's my graph, right? Oh no, I wanna see my table. I have my table, right? So very quick coding buttons that allows the user to really say, what do I want? Right. The other methodology that could be utilized for allocations or various number of things, depending on what the client uses, is the utilizations of radio buttons. So radio buttons are a fun kind of tool that you can use. Just give me one second here. Um, here we go. So you can have like a various things. There's like radio buttons is something I've used a lot in the past, right? So if I come here and I say, here's my radio button, it's going to say, okay, what's my value one? What's my value two? So value one is going to be table. Right, value two is going to be graph. Let me just type that in here. Perfect. All right, so now that's here. It's kind of set there. We see what it is. We're okay. So now, now I'm like identifying to myself. Okay, what's the actual name it gave to it? Right. So I have it selected, so it's radio button one, right? I can change this name if I want to. I can call it rb underscore one. Uh, there we go. Okay, so rb underscore one is this. Okay, so now, now a radio button by itself doesn't do anything. So I need to import another button. So I'm gonna make this smaller because it doesn't need to be that big. And I'll put a button here. So insert button. There we go. So you're here, put you up here next to this guy. Make you the same size, just so it's parent. Okay, so with this button, now I'm saying, okay, if, so yeah, it scripts on click. Now we can say, okay, now, we need to really think on terms of what we want this to do. So I'm gonna control V here, just so we have these, because uh, reuse is very nice. in here for a moment. So now we just need to identify how we're getting that. So we're gonna say var cell to our radio or our B, sorry, we changed the name, dot selected key. All right, because we want to know what it's giving us. 
So I'm going to close that. Now you see this. That all this is is telling us that it doesn't know what it hasn't been used yet. So if we say console dot log, I put that so close it. That's gone away now. But this will also show us what the user put in, right? And that the system is capturing it, which I'll show you momentarily. Uh, now we look back to say, what values did we set, right? So if we click back here, we look at the values. The value is value one and value two. Yeah, I put the one and two to make it simple for everyone. So now if I come back in here and we look at button three click, we know that. So now if our selection equals that value, we can now program it for what we want it to do. So now if it's equal to one, that's table. So then we'll copy this. Cut that out of there, paste it down here, and we'll flip the script here. Now, in the same respect, right, you can copy this guy and put it right underneath there. It's two, then it's back to where it was. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, control Z. So now we're covered. Now, let's go ahead and save that. Okay, and with this, now let's go ahead and refresh this. Now we see here's the button, right? It's default to that, so we're gonna click button. The button says, look, the feeded value is two, so therefore it went to the graph. I want to click on table, it's gonna put a one over here in the console, right? So perfect. So what that does is it shows us how we could utilize different objects and code them with base signature items to display what the user would need. So let's kind of go back into our PowerPoint and a client would like this because instead of having to go to many pages, which can slow them down in multiple refreshes, they can go into one area and kind of toggle through. So that's why it's desired and also it's a neat functionality. So I hope you enjoyed this session and again, thank you for coming. And please reach out if you do need anything. Thank you.